Oral answer and the first question stands in the name of Amy Adams. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Amy My Adams. question is to the Minister of Finance and asks, what lessons can the government take for New Zealand's economy from the current Greek financial crisis? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, the lesson we can take that is that in a world where many, where many governments are borrowing large amounts of money, it's very important to focus on sound finances. The adjustments in Greece are going to be harsh. Uh, they are looking at large tax increases, 14% cuts to state pay, followed by a multi-year freeze, closure of many agencies and reductions in pensions. This is somewhere we do not want to go, and we can keep away from it if we focus on sound government finances. Supplementary. Amy Adams. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question for the Minister. What implications does this episode have for New Zealand? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, the Greek situation is a more extreme version of the position that New Zealand faced about a year ago, with a deep recession, rising debt and a credit rating perhaps in jeopardy. Uh, in such a crisis, prevention is better than cure. Most observers agree that the two best preventative mechanisms are to have a flexible exchange rate and to keep debt at prudent levels. That is what we want to do. Supplementary. The Honourable David Cunliffe. Despite the fact that both Crown debt and unemployment have grown markedly under his administration, does the Minister not think he's being just a little too hard on himself, comparing his management to that of Greece? <laughs> the Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, I think it's un unlike that, member. We do have to be aware. We do have to be aware of things of where things could go wrong. And the fact is that the forecasts that we that we inherited from that government when we became the government were sending us in the direction of Greece. Amy Adams. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the minister. What light does the Greek situation cast on alternative proposals for managing the New Zealand economy? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, if the, government had, if the government had continued to manage the economy in the manner that the previous Labor government was, we would have ended up, we would have ended up with ever-increasing public debt, question marks over our credit rating, and probably ending up with some kind of major adjustment program. Unfortunately, Labor haven't learnt any lessons from that, and policies are advocating now would make things much worse, not better. Point of order, Mr. Point Speaker. Of order, the Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr. Speaker, I seek your considered ruling on this matter. Standing Order 3772 requires answers to be concise and confined to the subject matter of the question asked and to avoid arguments, imputations and discreditable references. It's established that ministers can refer to the historical record, as the Minister of Finance has done, including those of former governments. However, you have previously ruled that hypothetical references to another party's policies are not within standing orders. Sir, so Standing Order 1454 defines tightly the area of a minister's responsibility. 1457 specifically excludes opposition policy from that. Uh, stand, Speaker's Rulings 1533 underlines the need for content to be factual. Speaker's Ruling 1647 rules out hypothetical references to another party's policies and so on. Mr Speaker, taken together, the intention of standing orders and Speaker's Rulings is clear on this matter, which is to facilitate the accountability of government to the opposition's questions rather than to allow the government an opportunity to make up opposition policy. Sir, the opposition has no problem with the debate about the former government's record, but we would ask you to consider, consider the matter of whether the minister has on this occasion stepped across the line into hypothetical opposition policy. Order, order, order. I say to the Honourable Dr Nick Smith, a point of order is being considered, he must not interject. Had the Honourable Bill English gone on at some length uh, about Labour Party policies, I'd have agreed with uh, the Honourable David Cunliffe's point of order, but his reference at the end, there was only the briefest possible uh, reference. And what I would say, though, in relation to this whole issue, if opposition members don't want 
ministers to comment on opposition positions, they need to be a little more cautious about their interjections. I heard all sorts of interjections as the minister started to answer his questions today about wasn't he lucky inherited you know good things from previous government all that kind of thing and so you know if if opposition members don't want ministers to comment on either past policy or current policy just be a little more careful with the interjections i believe today in my view the minister has not transgressed uh, supplementary question the honorable david chandler oh sorry Mr. speaker just uh, clarifying on that point of order matter and not wishing to relitigate your ruling but for future guidance can we be clear sir that historical references to a former government's policy or performance are in bounds but at least extended references to hypothetical positions that opposition might take are out of bounds i accept the the, the general point the member is making but in this particular occasion, if I recollect what the Minister said, he said something along the lines of the policies that, that uh, Labour is you know, continuing to espouse would have similar effect. Now, I, I don't think there's enough detail in that to argue the Minister is ascribing hypothetical policies to the opposition. But I sympathise with the fundamental issue the member is, is making. The supplementary question, Honourable David Cundin. Uh, Mr Speaker, can the Minister explain why, when Greek public debt is around 115% of GDP and New Zealand's net debt is around one-tenth of that amount, why he is running down his country and putting New Zealanders' exports and jobs at risk? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, I'm uh, simply drawing, atten drawing attention to the fact that when the government became office, came into office, it was faced with, in the December 2000 and update, it was faced with forecasts that showed net debt soaring to 50 per cent of GDP and permanent deficits, that is, never-ending deficits and ever-rising debt. That certainly would have been a path to the Greek kind of crisis. Question number two, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Uh, Mr Speaker, my question is...